Hello, and welcome to another episode of Goodcast, a podcast produced by Goodwill Industries of Fort Worth. I'm your host, Justin, and today we're celebrating International Women's Day with a very special guest, Shay Dial Johnson. We'll get into her career with Goodwill, experience in community organizations, and the importance of storytelling. So let's just hop into it. My name is Shay Dial Johnson. I am the Vice President of Community Engagement for Goodwill Industries of Fort Worth, and I have been with the company almost 15 years. It'll be 15 years this summer. Okay. And you've bounced around like positions quite a bit, right? Yes. So I've worked in three different departments, uh, retail administration, and now um, marketing or community engagement and several different positions and locations. So I've kind of been all over the place. Because you've been like a retail manager as well, right? So like you've been everywhere. The, the very first job at Goodwill was a Goodwill store manager, and that was right out of college. And I had no intentions of staying here a long time. I wanted to get some nonprofit experience and move on to be like a district manager in traditional retail or, um, you know, a, an event manager at like a bass hall or a ballet or something like that. So how did you get bumped to the marketing side of it? That was a long drawn out process. So once I left retail um, after managing stores and then being a district manager, I ended up in administration as the uh, director of admin, uh, working with uh, the CEO as the executive assistant and working as the liaison with the board of directors. And our CEO used to be over marketing prior to his stint as CEO. So he basically trained me in marketing so that eventually he could kind of turn me loose, which he did. And then I came over to the community engagement side where I do all of like the marketing, fundraising, um, community outreach, advocacy, stuff like that. So cool. I mean, you kind of touched on like full disclosure, you're my boss. So like, I yes. know, I know what we do, <laughs> um, but you kind of hit on the things that, that we do like on a daily basis. What is our main purpose for marketing or community engagement? So the community engagement department's sole job and purpose is really to spread the good news about goodwill. And we do that in a lot of different ways. We do that through our marketing efforts, um, with social media through public relations, billboard campaigns, print ads and advertising, fundraising events where we share um, our mission and um, vision to the community. Um, We do it through our advocacy works where we go meet with legislators and lawmakers and public officials and let them know all of the good things that Goodwill does. And so we, we do a lot of different things, but the purpose of every single thing that we do in this department um, is just to spread the good news is what I like to say. Do you think it's important for nonprofits or organizations that have like service programs to have a quote unquote face or multiple faces? I think so. I think if you don't, if you can't put a face to what what you're doing, it's hard for the public to understand or buy in to it. Um, So we like to put out several faces, you know, I'm the face of goodwill. Our clients are the face of goodwill. Our donors and shoppers are the face of goodwill. So um, it's really important to associate everything that we do with a person or with a face so that everyone can kind of see themselves or a family member or a loved one in, in what we're doing. And I think that just helps bring some humanity to it. Right. And most, if not all of that comes from that sort of like cross collaboration we're doing with departments across the organization. But it's also just like getting people comfortable enough to, to tell their story. Yeah. Um, do you have a lot of experience in that regard specifically? Um, I do. And it's over the years, it's just kind of turned into its own thing. It used to be like pulling teeth. You, you'd go around the building and go, you know, do you know anybody with a great story or is there someone we could highlight as a success story? And you are like, Oh, well this person, but they don't want to talk about their background or this person, but they're ashamed of their education. It was more like convincing people, please, you know, let me tell, you know, how, how you were able to change your life and turn your life around 
with the help of the resources that Goodwill gave you. And now it's like, I get to work and I power my laptop and someone's emailed me their entire life. And, and you walk past these people every day in the hall and you're like, I didn't know that who knew they had that struggle and people are eager and willing to share. And I think that just speaks to the care um, that we take when we um, highlight people um, on our success stories and the care that we take when we highlight them on social and we do everything in a very um, dignified way in a, um, a way to make them feel proud. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's this like kind of combination between the interpersonal relationships you develop at Goodwill and then just like sort of on a broader scope, all of the work that we do and other people do to like remove the stigma around people's past experiences. Exactly. That's been like a huge recurring theme throughout like the last couple episodes. So it's, it's cool getting to be a part of a department that works towards that goal. Outside of Goodwill, what experience do you have as a leader or a civil servant like within the community? I got really involved in the community as a freshman in college when I um, was initiated into my sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha, which is a international service organization. And our motto is to provide service to all mankind. And and that's what we do. And so that really opened my eyes to the power of working in groups and the power of putting lots of like-minded people together to serve a bigger cause and to be a part of something bigger than yourself. And then that morphed into just tons of different things, Steer Fort Worth, um, Leadership Fort Worth, where I developed my leadership skills and training, Junior Women's Club of Fort Worth. I'm currently um, a member of the Junior League of Fort Worth, which is an awesome organization that provides trained volunteers to the city of Fort Worth. And uh, we're able to go out and help other nonprofits like Goodwill, um, with volunteer needs that they may have and with financial needs they have. And I'm currently serving as the diversity and inclusion chair for that organization. And I'll be on the board of directors for junior league next year. I'm also on the board of directors for housing opportunities of Fort Worth, which assists people um, gain a moderate and low income housing because affordable housing in our city is tough. Um, And so I do that. I volunteer at the food bank. I volunteer at at a variety of different organizations and nonprofits. And I just want to be a good example to my son and to my friends and family. I've decided a long time ago, I wanted to live a life of purpose and my purpose is to give and I don't have a lot of money. So I do have time and I do have talents. And so that's how I'll be able to give back. I'll give my time to different organizations. I'll offer my talents up to different organizations. And um, that's the way that I can give back. Quick plug here. Did you know that we have a page on our website dedicated to the accomplishments of Goodwill Fort Worth and its staff? A quick overview of this awards page lets us know that Shea has been presented with Fort Worth Business Press's 40 Under 40 in 2020, the Girl Scouts of Texas Oklahoma Plains Women of Distinction in 2018, and Raising the Standard Foundation's Community Impact Award for Excellence in Public Service in 2018 as well, among others. Would you consider yourself as someone who has always had the characteristics of a leader? You mentioned that course you took, which like refined your skills. Um, But has that always been something that has been a part of your personality or was that something you developed through Goodwill or through these other organizations? No, I think it always came naturally to me. Um, You can just, I'm that type A alpha female that I just like don't want to wait on people and I'll do it and I'll figure it out and I'll lead the charge. But one of the great things about going through leadership development programs like Leadership Fort Worth and like the Senior Leader Program for Goodwill Industries International, which I just completed um, last summer, is that it teaches you also to be a good teammate because to be a leader, you've got to be a great teammate. And that doesn't always mean being upfront. Um, Sometimes it's working really hard uh, in the background. And I love doing that too, because 
I'm actually as great of a public speaker as I am. I'm mortified to have to deal with people. It makes me very tired (laughs) because I'm an introvert. (laughs) So is that like experience to know like when to take charge and when to step back kind of what gives you the energy or motivation to be involved in so many groups? I think so, because, you know, when it's when it's not your turn, it's not your turn and you sit out and you don't feel bad about it. You just kind of let somebody else do it. I have overdone it before. I've been the lead on every project in every organization and it's tiring and you're not giving 100 percent of yourself to any of those groups, you're giving this group 20 and this group 40 and this group, you know, 40 when you really could just give a hundred percent over here, sit out over there until they need you and then switch out. And so um, I encourage anybody to do that. Like don't burn yourself out. Don't try to do too much, do what you can, you know, and be more effective and, and be more helpful. Since it is International Women's Day, I wanted to pull information on things like diversity and inclusion in regards to gender and identity. Luckily, internationalwomensday.com had a ton of articles and resources for just that, so let's dive in and we'll learn from Shay's experience as well. You can also check out more specific information regarding this year's theme, Achieving an Equal Future in a COVID-19 World, on the United Nations website. According to internationalwomensday.com, over 87% of companies are highly committed to gender equality, which is more encouraging than a similar survey taken in 2012 that only rang in at about 56% of employers. Initiatives like this can be huge for workplaces. Providing welcoming spaces to women and minority groups has the power to attract similar candidates for future positions and can create opportunities for more diverse leadership. I remember uh, in traditional retail, I really was interested in loss prevention. Well, there were no women in loss prevention. It's always guys. And so they don't even look at you for the LP jobs. You know, Mm -hmm. they they go right to the guy. And so... um, that's the great thing about where I am now. It is a diverse workplace. Nobody's looking at you differently because of your um, uh, gender or race for that matter, for you to be able to do something that, you know, I I feel very uh, blessed to have been able to do that here. But even in a lot of um, outside organizations, I, I purposefully join a lot of female centered organizations because I love working with women because we're all kind of trying to do the same thing and there's not that friction. Mm -hmm. Um, But I can work with anybody, you know, and I know how to speak up for myself and go, well, wait a minute, you know, I have something to say and and be heard. And that's important too. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the kind of like tricky thing with, label specifically is that like depending on the circumstance they can be very empowering and other times they can kind of pigeonhole you into into one area and so i think finding that balance of you know when you want to affix that label to yourself or forego it is important and i think it takes time and experience to know when it is a strength and when you don't need it i guess right Yeah, absolutely. That makes perfect sense. How does your experience in the community um, tie back to your work at Goodwill and vice versa? You mentioned like um, some networking opportunities, some fundraising opportunities, things like that. Um, But does it extend beyond that as well? It does. And they all go hand in hand. I mean, I'm not volunteering at an organization or Um, working somewhere separately or doing anything and not mentioning Goodwill. I'm always talking about Goodwill and what we do because most people don't know. And then vice versa, I'm at work and I'm always looking for partnership opportunities for Goodwill um, in the community. So, you know, for instance, uh, we're going to be a host site for Funky Town Fridge. Well, that's something I came across outside of Goodwill. But once I heard about it and understood what the mission of that organization was, I thought, well, wow, we kind of help people like that, too. You know, we help people that have barriers to education and employment. They're helping people that have barriers to um, food and are experiencing food insecurity. Well, if you can't afford food, you may not have a job. Why aren't we working with this organization? How can we help them? And so that's kind of how I forged that partnership. Um, And it could be any other organization. 
you're always going to have the opportunity to meld um, those two pots together, community and work, because I mean, what we do at Goodwill is community. Because you mentioned your your son, Trey, earlier as being part of a motivation for your uh, community outreach. How do you explain your job or your community outings to him? Is he curious about that at all? He is, and he doesn't quite understand what mommy does. He knows I work at Goodwill. Um, if he sees a bull, a billboard, he'll say, you know, my mom did that billboard. If he sees a store, he'll go, my mom makes those, those graphics. He, he gets that part. Um, I don't think he understands the mission. And I try to tell him a lot um, what we actually do here um, aside from the retail aspect. Um, but he does know about volunteer service and the importance of that because I take him to a lot of volunteer activities with me. So if, if it's something that I think he can do, he, he will be there to do it. Um, so he has worked, um, my sorority does a math and science Academy, um, annually for middle school age girls. He has been at the math and science Academy since he was born. Mm -hmm. And when he got old enough to stuff lunch bags, he was in the kitchen with the ladies stuffing lunch bags. So he knows, um, that we work, uh, we work in this family and we work to help other people. And so, um, and he doesn't have any questions or qualms about that. He gets what volunteerism is. We both come from sort of artistic backgrounds. My degree is literally in art and you have a theater degree, which I, I find kind of interesting, especially when you talk about how you were like, oh, I want to be like a retail director and stuff. How do you tie your degree into theater, into your work? It's very interesting. I get that question a lot. And what people don't know is degrees in theater prepare you for so much more than the stage. It almost actually doesn't prepare you for the stage. It prepares you for everything but the stage. So um, the skills that I picked up um, at Texas Wesleyan and being a part of that program um, are just immeasurable, you know, really, I knew a lot of marketing already because I learned it as a part of my theater degree. Right. You kind of have um, to market yourself as an actor. Exactly. Um, I already knew a lot about staging things and, and things of that nature. And that ties kind of into my retail background. Um, I knew a whole bunch about management because I learned a lot about stage management and it's all the same thing. It's all the same principles, scheduling, um, finances, all of that you learn as a theater major. And I was a generalist. I did not focus on um, acting or technical theater. I did both. So I learned just a lot of everything. And as a part of my degree, I got a, a bachelor of fine arts and to get that BFA instead of just the BA, you had to do a project. And so from beginning to finish, I produced an entire show, um, did the marketing, did the finances, did the lighting, the sound, I acted in the show, I did the artwork, I did everything. And so that was a semester long project that really kind of prepares you to just run something, mm -hmm. run anything. And so I brought so much of that with me here and at my career at Goodwill. And so um, I was fearless and I didn't, I'm not scared to speak up um, to a group and I know how to motivate a team because I'm acting, I may be mortified, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm going to put on my brave face and, and get my team motivated and going to do this task. And so, um, I can't say enough good things about it. And so I encourage students to pursue their degrees in the arts because it'll take you well beyond. I know, you know, their parents are looking at them going, oh, my God, you're getting an art degree. You'll never get a job. You will. You'll mm. get a job. <laughs> and, it, and it won't have anything to do with art and you'll be paid. So. Well, and I think if you want to make an even more like direct line from theater to marketing or community engagement, so much of theater is based on storytelling. Right. And that's kind of what we're doing as well with our success stories and if you wanted to put like a bigger emotion on it, like empathy, I think. Absolutely. And I mean, that even goes down to just, 
the write-ups that we have to do and, you know, script writing and, and seeing, you know, reading scenes and knowing how to use the right words at the right time. And um, when we do film those stories, knowing when to linger on that person's face and when to allow them to be vulnerable and all of that. I mean, that's all like acting and directing. I mean, to be quite honest. So um, yeah, it's all tied in. Mm -hmm. There is a sort of like balance between math and emotion when you're making like any kind of video thing, I guess, where you're trying to tell any story. (laughs) Some kind of way, some Uh kind of way. Why do you think it's important to share our success stories with people in the community? And how has that process changed throughout your time in Goodwill? You've just got to let people know what you're doing. And we can say all day, oh, we provide job uh, training and education. And nobody knows what that means. They're like, yeah, but you sell used clothes. You know, that that's what they hear. So um, when you put a face to it and you tell that story of the person that came in um, and got their CDL license like Gina or got their high school equivalency um, and was able to take care of their kids and their family. Um, you know, that's what people want to hear about. And that's when they can go, Oh, that's like me, or that's my niece, or that's my son. I need to refer them to this program. And so over the years it's morphed. You know, we used to do a lot of print stuff when I first got here, social media was so new, you know, we had a Facebook page that is it. (laughs) Um, And I'm still learning all the social media stuff. I mean, I I learned a lot of that from you. Um, I'm a very, very, very old millennial. So when Facebook came out, you know, you had to have a college um, email address to get on it. And Texas Wesleyan was not on the list of colleges. (laughs) So I didn't even have a Facebook page for a long time. Um, But even then we weren't really sharing the stories. And then we started doing these success stories, I think in the mid 2000s. Um, And they just kind of really picked up and now we're real sophisticated with them. And, you know, we bring in camera crews and all that stuff and really just get to the heart of the story and the heart of the person and let them tell it in their words. Is there like a type of story or like, you know, experience that resonates with you particularly? I think the ones that resonate with me the most are when people take the wrong turn. Right. So, for instance, a Brandon Reed story always resonated with me because our families know each other. We grew up in the same neighborhood and he came from a good from good stock, you know, and great parents and great grandparents and raised in the church. And it's like that one wrong move could change the trajectory of your life. And so I looked at his story And then thought about my own life, like, well, there's not much difference between he and I, except I went right. He went left. And so those those are the stories that stick with me the most or resonate with me the most is when the person makes one wrong move, because that could change your whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you want to see Goodwill or our community grow slash change in the next five, 10 years? I just want us to be able to break down even more barriers. Um, We talk a lot about in our strategic plan about just doubling our presence and um, just doing more um, with less and just being able to um, broaden our footprint. And so I, I feel like for for Goodwill specifically and for the community of Fort Worth, it's just to be able to break down even more barriers. We've got to get a handle on um, not only the, the education and employment piece, but I'd love to see us delve into um, affordable housing, um, affordable childcare um, as well, and um, affordable healthcare um, just here in our own community and food insecurity, you know, um, people should not have to, choose between medication and food 
gas and food, rent and food, and you can't afford rent around here, I'm telling you, I own a home and my mortgage is way less than rent in most apartments. And that should be a crime. And so I would love for us as an organization to get involved with things like that. And we can, um, it, it's going to take some time and some, um, some good fundraising, um, because, you know, goodwill belongs to the community and, um, the community donates to us and, and then we take those funds and make things happen. So, um, I, I would love for us to start delving into some of those uh, social areas. We've painted a pretty clear picture on how we can expand our programs throughout the community before advocacy, fundraising, and test programs. But for our purposes, and in my own opinion, it's the stories that we tell that will help spark true change throughout our community. And there are a few things more satisfying than sharing those stories. But of course, we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't promise something to look forward to. So here's one more announcement from Shay. You know, a shameless plug would be just keep your eyes out for Project Goodwill. We hope, hope, hope that COVID numbers are down this summer and that we can have a late summer, early fall event. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It's an awesome opportunity to um, give back and have some fun at the same time. Thank you all so much for listening. And thank you once again to Shay for being a part of this episode and helping us share these successes. And happy International Women's Day. You've been listening to Goodcast, a podcast produced by Goodwill Industries of Fort Worth. If you like this episode, be sure to let us know somewhere on the internet and consider sharing it with a friend. You can stay up to date on all things Goodwill by following us on your favorite social media platforms and signing up for our newsletter. And if you leave us a review, you can help us grow our show directly. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you find podcasts.